Hey guys, so let's talk about Double Masters. It costs, so I got the confirmation on how much it would cost to buy a box of this at distributor price. Um, anywhere between 195 upwards of 215, but let's for let's say it's 210 dollars $210 to buy a booster box. Now you might be thinking if every local game store can buy this amazing product at two hundred dollars or two ten, why wouldn't they just invest? So if you, the individual person, would invest at three hundred dollars or pay three hundred and ten dollars to hold this product long term, why would a local game store not invest at $210? And the answer will surprise you because many of you who invest in boxes, you have yet to try to sell the box. So I sell on Amazon. Amazon takes 20% off the top. They take um, another storage fee and the storage fee depends on its seasonal. So around Christmas time, the storage fee spikes, I think, five times um, the regular seasons, right? In summertime or springtime, it's cheaper than it is around the holidays, which makes sense because um, Amazon um, is thinking about how to make the most money and people still want to sell their products, especially during holidays and volume. Now, in addition to the shipping cost, you have to ship the product to Amazon from wherever you got the product from, you then have to reship it to Amazon's distribution center. Um, and that costs money and that costs time. And remember, time has value. A lot of times when MTG finance people are doing calculations, they are calculating their time at $0 an hour, which cannot be true. Even if you were a Walmart employee, you would, you would be making more money, right? Who the blank is this? Anyway, even if you were a Walmart employee, you would be making more than $10 an hour nowadays. So you have to at least calculate your hourly wage uh, into it. And then if you have a store, well, you have rent, you have overhead, you have electric, you have gas, you have um, cable, you have internet, um, and you have other things. Maybe your phone line, you pay money for that. So when you talk about, you know, is this a good deal? If I lived at home and I didn't have a store, now A, would a distributor still, still send me stuff? It's questionable, right? Because a lot of times distributors only want to deal with stores and they want to deal with at such volume and such consistency that um, To buy this product or to be first in line for a new exciting product, you need to establish a relationship that you're willing to buy crappy products that will sit there for a long time. No distributor is going to sell their really great product if you do not buy their really, really bad product, which could be at this point in time, core 2021, which has much lower. You can go to donglare.com and click on the TCG player lows because that's about, I mean, if this card is near mint, why would you pay TCG player highs for the exact same card when you can have plenty versions for TCG mint? So that's why I, I never, or TCG lows, I never understood why people base their price on TCG mids. No one gets TCG mid. That's like a fantasy, right? That's why the number one sellers are always the lowest price, right? They're always at TCG low. Because they don't get, I mean, if you want to do any type of volume, there's no way you can list it at TCG Mid and expect to consistently get that for every single card. Unless, again, you have your own website, but your own website costs money, um, the domain costs money, the SEO costs money, the marketing costs money. All of this costs money. Like, Card Kingdom spends a lot of money, a ton of money doing marketing, and people just totally do not know that. Like, they just ignore this fact. And the money eats your margins, right? It eats at your margins. They run pay-per-click, by the way, on Google. Um, so that's very expensive to do. So back to my uh, investment idea. Um, the problem is if you sign a one-year contract and you're buying all this stuff, 
and they force you to buy Throne of the Eldrin, they force you to buy Ikoria, they force you to buy Pharaohs Beyond Death, and then finally you can buy this really nice product. There's no money in it. You lost money on Throne of the Eldrin for sure. There's no way like any game store has made money. After they banned Oko and they banned Once Upon a Time, try to sell a box of that today. <laughs> I mean, it's hard. And I know people, oh, well, you so did, blah, blah, blah. It can go up and... Yeah. Has anyone actually... Has any of these investors actually tried to sell? Now, again, I don't sell on eBay. I don't sell on TCG Player, but I do sell on Amazon. The margins are simply not there. If you're paying $80 a box, and it, and with the your time and your fee, it costs 35% on top of that, then you would have to sell the box for over $110, which you're, you're not are going to be able to because Wizard of the Coast is selling for $95. It's simply the math does not work out. I buy a box for $80 and I sell it for $95 to compete, but it costs me with my overhead, with my shipping to Amazon, with the 20% Amazon takes or Amazon Prime sh delivery fees, with the storage fees, with my own time, or if I hired someone, you know, that would be a little more realistic. I hired someone to ship out this product and track it and maybe do some marketing. I would be losing money on every single box of Throne of the Elder Rain, even though I bought it at $80. The, the same math applies to this product, even though the margins are significantly better. If... This product was so valuable. I mean, just think about it for a moment. How many game stores are there? Millions, right? Not millions. Okay, thousands, hundreds. I mean, at this point, there might just be a hundred total. But anyway, hundreds of game stores have the same opportunity to buy this product from their distributor for $210 or less. Why don't they invest? The answer is dead product. It's very dangerous. Even if no one thinks it's a dead product, it could be. There's, there's still the chance of dead product. Plus, you have to deal with returns and scammers and you know customer um, retention and what's it called? Customer satisfaction. You might have to, if you're not doing Amazon, you might get a complaint. And then you might have to deal with the complaint. And otherwise, you would have a bad review or something. So it's not as easy as, okay, let's buy this for 210, leave it in my garage and hope it does well. Um, it's not that easy. Um, and it's a tough, tough business. Because it's a very low margin business. It is a very scary business. And Dragon Maze is a prime example of this. It's been, what, seven, eight years? And people in many of these stores have had these Dragon Maze pre release kits or the booster boxes or fat packs forever. They cannot move the product. That is the nightmare. The nightmare is not Double Masters. Double Masters, you know, you will make some money from. The nightmare is Dragon Maze, or I believe Core 2021. It's a product that has no draft. Like many people ask, how are booster packs open? Some people open booster packs for fun, but the majority of booster packs are open at drafting. If you think about draft or sealed or pre-release, that makes sense. I mean, a lot of booster packs will be open because you don't have a standard deck. You're just opening packs right? Um, you're not buying singles. So yes, do I think singles can go up in price? Should COVID-19 subside? Yeah, of course. It makes sense because it would be like a set that no one opened and suddenly there are, are a few cards that are quite valuable. Obviously, it will drive the price of those boxes. But right now, a game store is looking at Core 2021 and they're saying, no, no more. And the same can be said exact same can be said about pre-release kits. That's why Rudy's saying he can buy thousands of them. I do think they are a good indicator of how the health of the local game store is going because the pre-release kits should make you money. It should be a really exciting time, right? 
hey, I have all these new customers coming in and I didn't pay any money to acquire them. It should be like the most exciting time in your store's life. But because of COVID, it was not. It was actually a very bad time. So I just throw this out to you. If all these master sets you can get for 210 or below, why wouldn't a game store invest in them? And the answer is it doesn't make financial sense. So if it doesn't make financial sense for a game store that probably has better liquidation than you do as a one person eBay vendor, um, assuming the game store has eBay, has TCG player, has Amazon maybe, why the blank would you be more successful than a game store full time doing this part time investing? Like you do realize how difficult it is to sell a sealed box, right? And how many scammers there are. There are so many blanking scammers for sealed boxes. I think Power Nine Quest just got scammed, but like that's you know he got scammed. But the reverse can happen is someone say, oh well, you know the packs in my box were open when they were not open, they were sealed. And then I've seen that happen quite a bit. And I was like, okay, I don't want to do this anymore. Which doesn't exist, right, for like Legos or something. I've never had a return on a Lego set. But when I was doing Magic, I used to 10% of, um, you know, card conditioning, especially foils. That's why I no longer send foils because the person receiving I couldn't think this foil is near mint. I think it's perfect. And the person receiving it has like a million, it's like, where, how does this happen? Or you can say, oh, well, you know, hey, you sent me a counterfeit card, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, no, I did not. But how? like the Black Lotus, for instance, that one dude lost about, what, $9,000? As a seller, he loses $9,000? Like how much do you need to sell? How much profit? So if you lost $9,000 from one transaction and then he lost another like 5000 from another transaction, so you lost a total of $15,000 from selling on eBay, what type of margin would you effing need to break even? It's just, I mean, it's very scary when you think about it, that two transactions cost the dude $15,000. That's probably like selling, what is that? 500 boxes of modern, of masters, double masters to break even after those two transactions. Bye guys.